we're going over the six main things that you'll need in order to get started with sheep and bring them to your homestead this spring. A few weeks back, my friend Justin Rhodes from AbundantPermaculture.com and the Justin Rhodes YouTube channel reached out to me and asked me for some help. As most people know, Justin is most famous for his work with chickens, being the apron wearing permaculture chicken ninja master and his film, Permaculture Chickens. Justin also has a lot of experience raising beef and having a family milk cow. Justin and his family have decided to add grass-fed lamb to their lineup on their homestead this year. So Justin reached out to me for help. He had a lot of questions about getting started with sheep, what kind of equipment does he need. So I put together a crash course for Justin on getting started with sheep and and that is what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. The first three things to get started with sheep are very similar to needs of a human. Number one being food. If your situation is really awesome and you have thick, lush, tall grass growing in your well-developed pastures, then food is already growing for you for the sheep. Your food situation is pretty much taken care of with your awesome pasture. However, if you're in a situation like me, where you still have snow on the ground, lots of standing water from all the snow melt and the spring rains we've been getting, or just no grass to speak of in your pasture, then your sheep are going to need hay. 100% grass hay is fine for a lamb, but best practice is to have an additional source of protein added in to help the lambs develop their muscles more quickly and get a bigger carcass yield in the end. And you can do that by adding in alfalfa hay or other legumes such as sanfoin hay, which is what's behind me, or field peas. Since alfalfa is a GMO product, it's really best to get a certified organic alfalfa but that can be hard to find sometimes. So an alternative to alfalfa hay is certified organic alfalfa pellets. If your local farm store doesn't carry certified organic alfalfa pellets, you can ask them and chances are they will be able to order some for you. So it's fairly readily available. The downside to the pellets is that they're a lot more expensive than hay. So if you have a lot of sheep you're bringing onto the homestead, this might be cost prohibitive. However, they're still really good to have on hand because they serve as a wonderful treat. Smaller lambs will require about three pounds of hay per day. As the lambs get bigger, their feed requirements will increase up to about five pounds a day. If you're sourcing a grass legume hay mix, a good ratio is 80% grass, 20% legume. And if you're using alfalfa pellets as your main source of a protein, then the ratio remains. If the lamb needs five pounds of feed, four pounds should be grass hay, one pound alfalfa pellets. And lastly for feed, the lambs are gonna need a place to eat their hay. You can make a do-it-yourself feeder out of wood and cattle panels, or you can buy a big fancy metal feeder like this. Or lastly, the most simple option, the least elegant option, but the most simple option is just getting a 30 gallon plastic tub like this from your local farm store. Number two, water. Sheep need constant access to fresh, clean water. For water tanks, again, I'm just using these 30 gallon tanks that you can get at your local farm store. Chances are it won't be an issue for you, but if you're still experiencing freezing temperatures when you get your lambs on your homestead, you can get a tank de-icer. So you submerge this in your water tank, plug it into an AC power supply, and this will keep your water from freezing. The method of how you get the water to the tank is also really important. We're using hoses on our homestead, but these aren't regular garden hoses. Typical run-of-the-mill garden hoses that you'd find in most retail outlets are going to have lead in them, other heavy metals, as well as toxic plasticizers. They're not really designed to deliver water that is intended for drinking purposes. The hoses we use on our homestead are designed for delivering drinking water. They are made out of materials designed specifically not to leach any kind of plastic 
junk into the water. Also, the ends are made with stainless steel instead of brass fittings, so you're not getting lead into your water. These hoses are manufactured by a company in Oregon called Water Rights Incorporated. Number three, sheep need a shelter. Sheep are very cold hardy creatures, but they will prefer to go in a shelter if there are heavy winds. They use the shelter as a windbreak. They also use a shelter to escape heavy rains. But from spring, when most people are first introducing lambs to their homestead, through fall, when most people are harvesting, the shelter mainly gets used as a source of shade to get out of the summer sun. The possibilities for what can be used as a shelter, especially for just just shade during the summertime is only limited by your own creativity. Stationary shelters can be as simple as arching a cattle panel on the ground and just putting a tarp over it. There are of course some slightly more substantial versions of the same concept, such as elevating the cattle panels using corral panels and adding some framing to support a snow load and even shelters using pallets and cattle panels to make pretty neat structures. Wood and roofing panels can be used to make pretty nice shelters for the sheep. The shepherdess from whom I purchased our sheep, Dr. Tess Hahn, she uses a canoe out in her pasture to create shade and some kind of shelter for her sheep. I was once at a sheep ranch where I saw the shepherdess using a trampoline actually to provide shade out in the shelter as well. So again, you're only limited by your own creativity for how you provide some form of shelter for your lambs. Number four, sheep need mineral supplementation. The two primary components I use for my mineral supplementation for the sheep includes Thorvin Icelandic kelp meal and Redmond selenium salt. Like several other regions in the United States, our region in the inland northwest is pretty deficient in selenium. Redmond is a company that mines really high quality salt and one of their products includes a salt that has selenium in it. The selenium in the salt makes up for the selenium that the sheep are not getting out on pasture. Thorvin kelp meal is the most premium high quality kelp meal that you can get and it is loaded with vitamins and minerals that are going to go a long way in keeping your sheep healthy. I used to mix in diatomaceous earth with this as well, a food grade diatomaceous earth at a ratio of four parts kelp meal, one part diatomaceous earth. That is supposed to help manage parasite loads in sheep. However, I have found the diatomaceous earth to be quite messy. The powder gets all in the air and it's really bad for humans to breathe and that means it's probably bad for the sheep to breathe as well. So I haven't used it this year. Minerals can be given to the sheep free choice. They're not gonna eat too much of them and get sick or anything like that. They only eat as they need it. So they can have access to it all the time. And the minerals are absolutely, <laughs> the minerals are gonna go a long way in helping revitalize your pasture because the minerals that are not needed by the sheep are gonna pass through and get deposited back into the soil through the manure. Is that good, Annabelle? You like your minerals? Number five, lambs and sheep need fencing. If you're bringing lambs onto your homestead for the first time, or if you're overwintering any sheep, it's really best to use cattle panels and T-posts. This is a physical barrier fence, so your lambs who aren't used to electric fencing are gonna do really well with this kind of fencing. They're not gonna be able to go through it. Electric fencing, which is a kind of psychological barrier fencing, not physical barrier, is excellent, especially when you're rotating your sheep on a regular basis out on pasture. You can move this stuff pretty regularly. The disadvantage with electric fencing is you do need to spend a little bit of time training the lambs to the electric fence inside of a physical barrier like cattle panels prior to putting them out on pasture and only using the electric fencing. And electric fencing will also need what's called an energizer to provide electricity and to provide the shock that is transmitted through the electric fence. This energizer is made by Premier One, which is an excellent producer of both energizers and fencing material for livestock. This one runs off of AC power, so you can plug that directly into a wall outlet, but it also can run off of a battery power supply so you can move it around on pasture without being tied down to the grid. Premier One also makes solar powered energizers so that you don't even have to worry about charging the battery, it does it itself, as long as you have sun. And finally, number six, sheep need 
friends. Sheep are naturally a flocking animal. They are a prey animal and they get a sense of safety when they're in numbers. If you want to see a stressed out, unhappy lamb, put it by itself and it's going to be miserable. So if you're interested in bringing lambs onto your homestead, keep in mind you need a minimum of two. You cannot just get one, otherwise you're going to have a really unhappy, stressed out animal. So a minimum of two, but the more the merrier. Those are the six things that you need in order to get started with sheep this spring. If you're interested in learning more, getting more information about the different items I mentioned in this video, head on over to our website, grassfedhomestead.com. On the website, you'll have the opportunity to get a free PDF copy of all the information that's in this video with more details, links to different products that we recommend. Just enter in your email address and we'll get you all the information sent right over right in your email inbox.